Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm going to show you how to change your rear brake pads on a 2017 Honda CRV. And this has the electronic parking brake and I'm going to show you how to retract that as well. So we just need to loosen and remove these two caliper slide pin bolts. Those are a 12 millimeter. set those aside we can just pull the caliper off now it's it's not going to come straight off because this electric motor is in the way so just we'll just take it off and just set it right there for right now now I'm not going to be changing the rotors on this one they look okay it has not worn down metal to metal and we're not even going to bother resurfacing them this time but uh, if you'd like to uh, pull the rotor off you just need to take off this caliper bracket and take off the uh, the Phillips screw here and you should be able to pull the rotor off We'll just pull out the old pads. Now on this kit, this one does come with the replacement clips here, so we can pull these off. Just throw those away. And I'm also going to pull out these slide pins one at a time and get those cleaned up and re-greased. You can kind of just pull back on the boot and slide them out. And we'll wipe off this old dirty grease on there. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of this Silglide silicone based brake grease on here. It doesn't take much and I'm just using a clean part of my glove here to kind of smear that around. And then we'll pull that right back in. Just make sure that that spins freely in there. Same thing with the bottom one. Kind of just pull back on the boot as you pull them out. You see this, this bottom one's got this little, like a little rubber ring at the bottom. So make sure you don't mix these up. I've got enough grease here on the back of my glove still to smear around there. And then we'll just put that back in. Sometimes you have to squeeze on that boot a little bit to burp out any air, but that looks okay. And then I'm just going to just use a little wire brush to clean off the caliper support bracket before I put the new clips in place. Okay, and then these new clips, just put them right back where the old ones were and snap them in place. If you can, there we go. You just want to make sure that those are seated flush in there. If they bind up with anything, that'll cause your pads to drag. Now you'll notice on the old pads, our little wear indicator right here was on the inside pad and it was on the bottom side so we're going to do the same thing on this side before i put the pads in though i like to put just a little bit of this sill glide on the back of the brake pad shim that seems to cut down some of the noise a little bit at the ends here as well now these for the rear come with these clips already attached the new ones and what those do is those are springs that push off on the on the support here so that it doesn't get hung up or doesn't drag and then we just need to put these in. It kind of has to go in at a little bit of an angle like that. And then same for the outside pad. Just a little bit of this brake grease and then at the ends here. And then we'll just line that up. And press that in place as well. Okay, now we got everything all set down here. Slide pins are cleaned and lubed and then our new pads are in place. But we need to push this caliper piston back in. Now because of the electric motor here, it's kind of a little bit tricky to push that back in and I'm going to show you how I do it. And what we need to do first is disconnect this, this line right here. So I'm just going to grab a little, little uh, mini screwdriver here and just pop this if I can. There we go. It's a little tricky but that, that will just come out. Now, you don't want to put anything here in the harness that goes to the car. You can mess up the computer, but I'm just going to position this around so you can see if I can do this without knocking out our brake pads. There we go. All right, so I've just got this sitting right here, and you can see I've got my electrical connector taken off. And all we need to do is put a 12-volt power source to this motor, and that will spin it and... Uh, spin it in 
Now we're still gonna need to use a special tool to compress this the rest of the way, but internally we just need this to go all the way in so that we can turn it and compress it. What I'm gonna do is just, uh, I've just got a couple little mini alligator clips here. And these clips are probably not the best. If you had some little terminals would be better so that, just to make sure that they don't touch each other. You see they're just clipped inside there. And then I've got this one draped up here so that these two won't touch. And then I've got the, uh, the black one clamped in here. I'll show you, I'm just using a, uh, a car battery over here that I'm connected to. But you can use really any 12 volt source. And when I connect this next one, it'll do one of two things. It's gonna push, push this caliper piston outward towards us, or it's just gonna, you're gonna hear it making noise without it moving at all. And that means internally it's spinning back in. And it'll get to a certain point, then this will start to spin and that's when we can go to our specialty tool, our, you know, our caliper wind back tool, and we can push that the rest of the way in. So let's go ahead and, and connect it and see what happens here. All right, so you can hear the motor running, but it's not moving. So that means it's going the correct direction. Just for the sake of uh, showing you what it might look like if it goes the other way, I'll go ahead and, and swap these here. So now I've got red to the black and black to the red here, so you'll see it. You hear it pushing back out to where it was and see now you can see it coming towards us. So that way at, le at least you know what direction you need to go. So in our case it's just red to red, black to black on our on our battery here with these two terminals. I've got uh, positive in the bottom one and, and the negative or ground in the top one here. Well, this is upside down, but you, can, you, you know what I'm talking about. And then we'll just reconnect that. And then listen to the motor. And then eventually when it gets back in, this will start to turn. Okay, as soon as it starts to turn, you can disconnect it. Now we just need to use our, our caliper wind back tool and I'll show you what that looks like too. Uh, we can disconnect these leads. This right here, this set, uh, and this is the one I'm gonna be using. It's just a standard thread or you're just gonna be turning this in or clockwise. And the, the piece that I'm using in this kit is F and that just lines up, lines up here with the face of this caliper. See, it's got these two little cutouts or grooves and this little pin just kind of, these two pins just fit right in there. So we'll just put this in our tool and set it up like this. And then we'll just turn this out to where it's snug up against the caliper. And then now all we need to do is turn this in and you kind of just snug that as you go. I just kind of got it propped in here and I've got uh, the lower bolt in just to hold this steady while I turn this in the rest of the way. But it's it's very stiff still because you're turning that motor at the same time. But if you try to do this without, uh, without backing off that motor first, you won't be able to push it all the way in. Okay, that looks good. All right, and then we can pull this tool off. And I'm gonna pull out this little lower caliper bolt that I put in to hold this in place or hold this steady while I did that. I would have just left it in and rotate this down, but the motor doesn't allow that. Now, another thing I wanted to point out is you wanna have this oriented so that this notch, this notch in the face of the caliper lines up because there's a little, a little, um, little part on the pad that it has to engage with. Uh, okay, I didn't quite go just far enough, so let's try that one more time. Okay, I wasn't quite there. Thought I was done, but let's put this back in here. See if we can't give it another turn or two. Use a little wrench on there as like a little cheater bar, or a little leverage. That's better. Okay, that's better. I didn't quite have it turned in all the way, so it wouldn't go on. Now it, that looks a lot better. And then we'll just kind of reposition the caliper. This little notch right here, you just want to have that 
facing down. I'll show you here on the old pad. You see you've got this little part that sticks out on the pad that needs to go into that little uh, that little center cutout in the one of the little center cutouts in the caliper piston. That looks good. And we can put our caliper pin bolts back in. And the slide pin bolts back in. Now the torque spec on these is only 19 for the rear. And sometimes these slide pins will spin on you when tightening, so you may need to use a let's see, you may need to use a 19 millimeter open and wrench on there. By the way, this torque wrench, if you don't uh, if you don't have a torque wrench, I recommend you get one, but this is a good one. This is the gear wrench 85062. And I like that it's got this little collar you can slide back and lock it into place. I'll get a link to that in the description if you're interested. Alright, and then we can just reconnect the electronic parking brake motor. Just slide that in until it clips. And you're done. Now just remember to step on the brake pedal a few times before you drive out, which will push this caliper piston back out, pushing these pads up against the rotor where they need to be. Now when you do that, it's a good idea to not press the brake pedal all the way to the floor. Just press it down a few times part way until it feels firm. That way you know that this is out all the way. If you press it all the way to the floor, it's possible that you can damage the seals in your master cylinder. Now I didn't show it, but before you push the caliper piston back in, it's a good idea to pop the hood and take a look at your brake fluid level to make sure that there's enough room in there uh, so that when you push this back in, you're not going to overflow that brake fluid and make a mess. Now you can also just uh, loosen this bleeder screw, put a hose on there and push the fluid uh, out through the bleeder rather than backwards through the system and then you'll just have to top off the master cylinder when you're done. And that's not a bad idea at all. It's actually a, um, it's recommended to change your brake fluid every so often and that's a good way to cycle it through. Uh, just double check your manufacturer's recommendations on that. Also just double check on the torque specs here. 19 is just what I found online. Hope you like the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description to some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.